Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at how to determine the size of a class width for frequency distributions or for histograms. First of all, what is a class width? When we create a histogram, each bar represents an interval of numbers. These intervals are called classes. Each class is the same size and that size is called the class width. To determine the class width, we calculate it by subtracting two largest values or two least values. So each width, as we can see here, we have a number of books and then we have the frequency of the number of books. What we would do is we would take the 1.5 here and subtract it by the 0.5. So 1.5 minus 0.5 means that the class width here is one. And we should know whether the 0.5 is included or if the 1.5 is included in that first bar because only one of them can be included. So either it's the least or the most and that is usually given to us or it might not matter if there are no data with that particular value. And as I just mentioned, each data value fits into exactly one class. So if, well, I guess there's no such thing as 1.5 books, so that would be a little bit silly. Um, but if there were 1.5 books or one and a half books, it should either go into the first column bar, blah, Okay. I don't know why I raised the number for some reason. Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at how to determine the size of a class width for frequency distributions or histograms. First of all, what is class width? When we create a histogram, each bar represents an interval of numbers. And the interval of numbers always includes one endpoint and does not include one endpoint. So if we were to write it out, it would always be either parenthesis one comma three or whatever it is, bracket, or it could be including the one, but not including the three. It only includes one of the endpoints. The intervals are called the classes. And each class is the same size, and that size is called the class width. To determine the class width, we calculate it by subtracting either two largest consecutive classes or the smallest. So it depends on what's included. If the least values are included, we subtract the least values. If the largest values are included, we subtract the largest values. So in this example, we would subtract 0.5 from 1.5 to determine the class width. So class width, we're just gonna take the information on the x-axis, 1.5 minus 0 0.5, and we end up with a class width of one. And that should be consistent no matter which two consecutive values you use. Consecutive just means in a row. I chose the first two, but hypothetically I should have the same class width if I use these two values, which I would. And what I mean when I say, I'm going to actually written there, each data value fits into exactly one class. So if for some reason there was 1.5 books, which makes no sense, the one, but we're going to pretend like it does, the 1.5 should either go in this frequ uh, frequency or this one, but it doesn't go in both, right? Everything should be counted once and only once. So we just wanna be really careful about how we're including those endpoints. We might wanna label it, it should be given to us one way or another. How do we calculate the class width? First, you need to decide how many classes you need. Usually, the number is between five and 12. If you have fewer than five, then you're not really gonna give too much information about your data, and if you give more than 12, you're going to give an overwhelming amount of information about your data. Find the range of the data by subtracting the largest data value by the smallest data value. Divide the range by the desired number of classes. And here's the important part. Whatever the number is, round up. You always, 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 always round up. It doesn't matter. We, the, the rules of rounding don't apply when we're talking about class width. Round up. So for example, if we end up, when we subtract, when we find the range and then divide by the number of classes and we get 3.293029, that will round up to four. It does not matter that the tenths place is a two, we round up. Okay, so given our data, given is data on the number of 20, let's look at some examples. Given is data on the number of hours 20 students spend on their phones each week. Determine the class width if there will be five classes. So we're going to take these data and we're going to divide them into five classes. That was a very loud motorcycle. Let's try again. 
Let's look at some examples of calculating the class width. Given is the data on the number of hours 20 students spend on their phones each week. Determine the class width if there will be five classes. So we're told that there will be five classes. We already know this information. Let's see what we would do. So first we're gonna calculate the range. To find the range, we're gonna take the largest value, which this data is in order, so that's 39, minus the least value, three. So 39 minus three is 36. Now we're gonna take the range and we're gonna divide it by the desired number of classes, which in this case is five. So that would be 36 divided by five. 36 divided by five would be 7.2. And what do we do? We always round up. We round up even though it's a two, so that means that the class width in this case will be eight. And therefore what that means is that wherever we start, so if we're gonna start, let's see, we, you might wanna start with either your least value or you can start at zero or one, whatever makes the most sense to you. But if we start at one, let's say, the class width is eight, so that means the next tick mark on our histogram would be one plus eight or nine. Included in here would be the values one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to nine. So what I'm saying is that we would include one, we would not include nine, or you could not include one and include nine. Um, you just have to make that clear uh, when you're creating this, if it matters. It might not matter. In this case, it doesn't matter because neither one nor nine appear, but maybe somewhere if we keep building the histogram out, so the next one would also, we would add eight and that would give us 17. Yeah, we don't have to worry about it there. So it might matter. And then we would have to decide if we want this or if we want this, but you can't have both, right? If there was a nine in our data, the nine should fall into one class, not two. Let's look at another example. Below shows the number of words students in a class could type in one minute. Determine the class width if there are to be six classes. Okay, so what's the first thing we do? We're gonna first calculate the range. The range, we take the highest, and again, I put these in order for us, so that's 70 minus the least, 10. 70 minus 10 is 60. We're gonna take the range and we're gonna divide by the number of desired classes, which is six. 60 divided by six is 10. This one is a terminating decimal, it's actually a whole number, but, but what do we do? We round up. We bump up to the next, so even though it looks like there should be 10 classes, because look, it worked out perfectly, we have to bump it up. So the class width in this case will be 11. The class width has to be 11. And there is a really good reason why, even though it worked out perfectly, that we have to bump it up, and that's if you were to look at the data, remember you're only including one endpoint. So if you start your data at 10 and you include 10, if you were to only use a class width of 10, you would get up to 70, but you wouldn't be including 70 in that last class, right? So if we were to use 10, I would start at 10, then the next one would be 20, then 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70, right? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six. This is if I was having six classes, which was the desired amount. Now, remember that either we include 10 or we include 20 in the, this first class. So if I include 10 since I need to, we would say 10 to 20, then this would be including 20, excluding 30, and we would get over here and we would include 60, but we wouldn't include 70. Therefore, we don't have enough classes or we don't have a large enough class width to include all the data, and it's really important that we do. So even though this turned out perfect, we still must bump it up to the next value. So we would end up with a class width of 11, and that would, therefore we would be able to include 70. Now it's gonna, it would go past 70, right? If we use a class width of, of 11, if I start at 10, then I would, the next class would be 21, 32, 43, 54, 65, 76, and that's okay. So this class, this last class is gonna include numbers that, that don't exist, right? We don't need it to go up to 76, but it's okay because all of the data are going to fall into one of these classes. And our last example, below shows the average number of daily steps of participants in a step challenge. Determine the class width if there are to be 11 classes. And so I put the, the, the data in just a random order um, but because we're not really looking to see if we can locate the largest and smallest, I highlighted them for us to make our lives a lot easier. And so let's see what we're gonna do. First, we're gonna calculate the range. So we're going to do 28,715 minus 9,969 
and when we subtract, we end up with 18,746. We want 11 classes here, so we're gonna take that value, 18,746, and divide it by 11. And when we do that, this is actually an approximation, not an exact, but we get approximately 1,704.1.2, whatever you wanna do here. But either way, it doesn't matter what we do here, right? Because what is either the one or the two gonna do? We bump up for class width. So that means that a class width in this example would need to be 1,705. These have been examples of determining